Let's do this. Well, welcome to the Wednesday webinar, Restaurant Growth. We get together on Wednesdays every week. We have a webinar series, a webinar series where we actually can give you some tools, some new ways to hopefully look at your restaurant a little bit differently. Hopefully give you some new tools. Hopefully get you some traction and some momentum going in the direction you want to go at. The biggest thing I will tell you, and if you listen to any of my podcasts, read any of my books, listen to any of these webinar replays, you know I always say this, all business problems are people problems. Other side of that coin is all people problems are communication problems. So let's go over the rules real quick. If this is your first time on the webinar, type in the chat first time. <clears throat> so we're going to go over the rules real quick. Number one, here's what I want you to do. I want you to have some fun. <laughs> Number two, I want you to take notes. Research has shown if you write stuff down in your own handwriting, you are 70% more likely to remember the information 30 days from now. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And number three, take action. They say knowledge is power. That's a bunch of bullshit. If you don't apply what you've learned, you haven't really learned anything. You have to apply the things you learn, whether it's just one or two little things that you learned from today's webinar. Take one or two gold nuggets and make a commitment to yourself. That I'm going to take this stuff. I'm going to go back into my restaurant. And I'm going to implement 100%. Half-ass efforts get half-ass results. And then every once in a while during my presentation, you're going to hear me say those magic words. Luke loves it when I do this. I'm going to say hashtag WTSD. That means write this shit down. That's the gold nuggets. That's the things I really want you to make sure you do take away. If we've never met before, it's your first time on the webinar series. I am Donald Burns. I am the restaurant coach. I am a recovering restaurant owner. <laughs> a lot of people say, what does that mean? It means I owned restaurants and I sold them. And now I'm just always kind of like still a little, <laughs> have a little twitch from it. I'm also a consultant. I've been a consultant for a lot of big, huge, broad service food, uh, food companies like Cisco Foods, U.S. Foods, Shamrock Foods. I was also a chef. I was a chef when I owned my first restaurant, second restaurant. I was a chef after I sold my restaurants. I got recruited by Wolfgang Puck, and I went around the country opening restaurants for Wolfgang Puck for a number of years. I'm also an author of most well-known for the Your Restaurant Sucks trilogy. I've also have my newest book out, came out, Savage Restaurant Success, and I have another book coming out in the fall. It's called Ingredients. I'm also a restaurant investor. I invest in small startup restaurants. Usually I find they have a good growth opportunity and a, usually a, a good vehicle opportunity, usually some really cool niche stuff as I like to do. And I'm also a former member of the U.S. Air Force pararescue teams. Everything I learned about high performance, teamwork, mindset, achievement, peak performance, all came from my time in the Air Force when I was in a member of the pararescue teams. They did try to kill me, but <clears throat> I survived, which was good. Now, when I opened my first restaurant, now, my father was a chef. I apprenticed with him. And so I started at 15. <clears throat> I took a little break from 18 to 22 in the Air Force. And then I went to college, got jobs back in restaurants. And then, of course, when I became 30, I had the br brilliant idea <laughs> that I was going to open my own restaurant. And I opened my first restaurant in 1995. This is actually my first restaurant. Small little restaurant, 50 little seats. It was my love. I loved it so much. It was an amazing little adventure. But like a lot of people, I thought because I had restaurant experience, that's all you needed to open a successful restaurant. And sadly, it did not go that way. I quickly realized that I was in over my head and that even though I knew how to run a restaurant, I did not know how to build a profitable brand. But I was very, very fortunate that a man who is a regular at my restaurant, who is a very, very successful businessman, maybe he felt sorry for me. <laughs> maybe he saw the desperation in my eyes. Maybe he saw the, the, you know, the huge bags under my eyes and the disdain and distress on my face. That one night he sat down and offered to basically be my mentor and my coach and offered to show me the path to get out from where I was, to get to where I want to be. And he basically described, described it like this. He goes, Donald, if I gave you a three-digit lock, and I said, open the lock, could you open the lock? And I said, well, I mean, can I cut the lock open? He goes, no. 
all right, if I can't cut the lock open, I probably could probably eventually figure it out. And he goes, well, just let you know, in a three-digit combination lock, there's a thousand different variables. So then I kind of thought about it and like, all right, it would be hard. He says, exactly. But he goes, what if I gave you the combination to restaurant success and I showed you the way the combination goes? I said, oh, it'd be great. I would love that. So he actually laid out this thing. He took out a little, um, he took out a little beverage napkin. It was on the table. He took a beverage napkin, took a pen out of his pocket. He wrote down three words, people, product, process. He said, this is the roadmap. And honestly, I looked at him like, it can't be that simple. And he said, well, it's kind of simple, but there's a, a kind of a catch to it. You have to have the combination in the right order. This is where all restaurants go wrong. I'll tell you right now, if you're making a mistake, if your restaurant's not making 18, 20, 22% profit, your problem is right here. It's in the 3P framework. It is always people, product, process. Now, to open the lock, you have to put them in the right order. People, then product, and then process. How do restaurants mess this up? We have them out of order. Most restaurants all start with product because everyone has a menu. And then you realize, oh, you know, I probably need some process in place. I need some checklists. I might need maybe a PL. and And then you go back and say, oh, you know, I, I probably need to interview some people. I probably need to train some people. Remember this. People feeds process. Process feeds people. Every month, someone will call me and say, Donald, I'm frustrated. I say, what are you frustrated about? I say, my team's not following the checklist. Anybody relate? <laughs> I'll say, what's wrong with the checklist? And I'll say, mm, nothing. You gave me the checklist. I'll say, all right. Well, if I gave you the checklist, I know the checklist is good. Look at the 3P framework. It's the people part. It's your culture. People don't know why the checklist is important. They haven't bought into the culture. You don't have a culture of accountability. Everyone's basically fighting and clawing for their own little piece of what they want in your restaurant. And no one's on, on the same page and on board. So people always feeds everything else. When your people part's right, the product part will be better and your process will be better, which means your profitability be better. Now we take this 3P framework and we broke it down into multiple modules or we call it like little lessons. It's called the restaurant accelerator. And the restaurant accelerator basically does the same thing. It's people product process, but we're gonna take you through a series of workshops, strengths, is team one, one team. We're talking about culture, know why workshop. I'm going to show you how to create a complete hiring system. That's the talent attraction method. Then we're going to move up into the product part. I'm going to take you down the rabbit hole and teach you why food costs is the most valuable thing you can do. If your restaurant is struggling right now, if you're at 5% profit or less, if you just do the food cost boot camp, you will add 5% to your bottom line fast within like 60 days. So if you are struggling, and I tell you, a lot of people join us in the restaurant accelerator program, they are either losing money, breaking even, or that 5% part. The fastest way I can do is I can get you that food cost boot camp right away, get some money on the board, get you moving in the right direction. After that, now we can start taking your menu apart, putting it back together. And then Luke and his team of, of marketing magicians can do their, their mojo, their, their secret magic mojo they do. I don't know what they do. I think they burn incense over there. I don't know. I don't think they're sacrificing chickens yet, but these guys have some kind of magic marketing mojo that they unleash onto the restaurant world and they get people actually come to your place. But now here's the beautiful thing. When Luke and his team unleash their marketing mayhem upon your city, you will actually make a lot more money. Wouldn't that be nice? Not just to have marketing, but actually have marketing that keeps money in my bank not just drains out, that would be a beautiful thing. Now, after we have all that done, now we want to solidify it and protect it with the process part. This is I'm going to give you systems for accountability where I have some strategic plans, and then we're going to get that profitability up to 15, 18, or even higher. Right now, the average restaurant in our accelerator program is a 19.8% profit margin, which is actually pretty good. Today, on this workshop, I'm going to take you down. Now, granted, oh, we're not doing hiring, sorry. We're just going to do extreme menu makeover. Sorry, that was a mistake. We're doing just extreme menu makeover. All right. I'm going to take you down the rabbit hole. Now, the extreme menu makeover workshops is usually nine hours. I cannot teach you everything about extreme menu makeover in nine hours, but I'm going to take you down and we're going to talk about one of the most critical things about your menu today. 
is that pricing. So what if your menu could do more than just list your dishes? What if it could become a driving force behind your restaurant's profitability and guest loyalty? Would that be a good deal for you? If you like that idea, type in the chat, me, me, me. If you like that idea that your restaurant, your menu could be more than just a list of stuff that people look at, but actually becomes a driving force between profitability and also guest loyalty, type in the chat me. Let's see who wants more. Who wants more? Who wants more? Who wants more? Me, 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 me. Type in the chat. Type in the chat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I got a triple me. That's what I want. I got two triple me's. That's good. Good. Me, me, me. So you guys listen. That's always the first clue that you guys are good. It's when you type in what exactly I say as I type me, 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 and people type me, me, me. So if your menu is not where it's had to be, there's a reason why. There's a great quote here from Danny Myers. Your menu is your most powerful marketing tool. Luke will back this up. It speaks to your guests even before your staff does. So if you want to make more money, there's one thing you got to do. You got to price your menu right. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about balancing the menu, pricing strategies to attract and retain guests. Here is the problem. Make sure you got a piece of paper and a pen. There's going to be some gold nuggets today. <laughs> and if is this your first time on the call? Uh, I wrote a book called Your Restaurant Sucks. So I'm going to be really, really brutally honest. <laughs> So just be prepared for it. I always tell people the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. That's usually sometimes a good place to be. So let's cut to the chase. Your menu is a mess and it's bleeding your profits dry. I mean, I know you're thinking, I know you think you're doing the right thing by keeping the prices low, playing that value card to get butts in seats. But here's the brutal truth. Hashtag write this shit down. You are not a charity. You're running a business. And if you keep slashing prices to complete, to basically compete with the place down the street, you're going to be out, you're going to be out of business faster than you can say last call. You're caught in a vicious cycle. A lot of restaurant owners think that if I just keep lowering the prices, that'll bring in more guests. Or I'm afraid to raise prices because I'll lose guests. If you have this mindset, you're attracting the wrong crowd. You're attracting people who are only loyal to the lowest price. We call this a commodity. And when you are a commodity, you are bought at the lowest price value. This is where the fast food chains get into this, you know, these burger wars, these chicken sandwich wars. They all try to outdo each other. When you're a commodity, you're in what we call a red ocean. The red ocean is red because of the blood in the water because that's where all the competition's at. You want to escape the red ocean, get to what we call a blue ocean. When people are there for the value, the lowest price, they're not there for your culinary craftsmanship. They're not there for your atmosphere. They're not there for your service. They're there because they found a deal. And the problem is that they disappear when someone else gives them a better deal. These are not the guests who support your business through thick and thin. These are the people that are loyal to the coupons. They're the bargain hunters, and the bargain hunters will bleed you dry without a second thought. The thing you got to remember about the bargain hunters is that they're just looking for that deal. And the problem isn't that your pricing is too low. It's that you don't have a strategy. You're kind of like... It's like me being blindfolded and Luke wants to, you know, wants me to play a game of darts and he has me blindfolded. It spins me around three times and then he wants me to start throwing darts. I might be facing the right way. Luke might be ducking because I might be throwing darts at everyone else in the crowd. And he doesn't know because I don't know what I'm doing. That's a lot of way. That's a lot of the times that restaurant owners approach their menu pricing. Here's the thing you want to make sure. Trying to make everyone happy is a recipe for disaster. You're going to end up with a menu that is all over the place, no focus, no direction, just a mishmash of dishes that don't resonate with your brand or actually your target market. Luke will tell you the first thing about marketing is know who your market is, know who your avatar is. You cannot be everything to everyone, right? Because when you try to be everything to everyone in the process, you become nothing to anyone. 
And let's not forget about those loyal guests, the ones who actually care about what you're serving, who appreciate the effort and skill that goes into every dish you, that you do. You think, how do you think they feel when they see your prices creeping down to match that local place down the street? I don't know about you, but when I see prices creeping down or people not raising their prices, when I see all the other restaurants around me raising their prices, I start questioning a couple of things. Um, are they buying cheaper products or are they the most generous people in the world? If you're not raising your prices strategically throughout the year, I question what you're buying. Are you making it up by buying cheaper product? Most of you are not. You're buying really high quality products. I see I see people's websites all the time. I, I see your Instagram feeds. You're buying great stuff. If you're not raising your prices to be competitive, then you're basically sending me a signal that you might be buying cheaper stuff. Right? When all your dishes start looking like the bargain bin, it's over. <laughs> Your brand's going to start to erode. And then when your brand erosion or brand trust erodes, loyalty that was built over years starts to evaporate. This isn't just about numbers on a page. This is about the perception of your brand, the value of your offerings. Okay. You're playing a dangerous game when you undervalue what you bring to the table. Every time you drop the prices without a solid strategy, you're telling the guests that your food, that your experience, that your brand is worth less. And once you set that expectation, it's damn near impossible to change that. Okay. So what's it going to be? Scramble to make meets, you know, make the meets end, make payroll, make the, you know, keep the bank account just kind of above being empty, or finally take control of your menu and make it work for you. You got to stop chasing the competition and start setting the standard. Hashtag write that down. Stop chasing the competition. Start setting the standard. It's time to rethink your pricing strategy. It's time to start refining your menus. Time to reclaim the value that you offer. Because if you don't, you're not just risking your profit margins. You're risking your entire business choice, right? So that's the problem. It's a possibility. So imagine this, imagine that your menu not only reflects the quality and creativity of your kitchen, but also commands a price that your guests are happy to pay. I mean, not just happy, but they're actually eager and they're, th they're appreciative. Oh my God, that was, thank you so much. That meal was $200, but thank you. That was the most amazing experience I ever had. They don't walk in with a mindset of finding the cheapest dish in the menu. They walk in with anticipation, ready to indulge in an experience that they can't get anywhere else. I don't want people just to eat my food. When I have my restaurants, I never want to come and just come in and get a meal. I wanted them to savor it. I wanted them to talk about it. I wanted them to come back for more because what I offered was worth every penny. I don't want them to view my prices as a burden. I want, my, I want them to see my pricing as a badge of quality. These are the kind of guests that they're not just guests. They're what we call raving fans. They believe in your brand. They believe in your food. They believe in your vision. They trust when they sit down at your table that they're, they're getting something extra special, something that justifies the price, not just in taste, but the entire dining experience. And that's the key. Price with purpose. When you price with purpose, you create an experience, not a meal. It's more than just what's going on the plate, all right? It's about atmosphere. It's about the service. It's about the story behind every dish. You're selling more than food. You're selling an experience that's worth a premium. When you price with purpose, you stop chasing the competition and you start setting the standard. You're no longer reacting to what other people are doing. You're leading the charge. Your pricing reflects your confidence in what you offer. And here's the thing. Confidence is contagious. It resonates with your guests and it, it, it shows that you know what you're worth and you're not afraid to demand it. This is how you attract the right guest. The ones who appreciate what you bring to the table, literally and figuratively. I mean, they're not just looking for a deal. They're looking for value and they see it 
when they see what's brought to the table in everything that you offer, right? Here's the kicker. When you price with purpose, that's our big thing, price with purpose, hashtag write that shit down. You're not just going to attract the right guests. You retain them. You keep them coming back again and again because they see the value in every dollar they spend with you. They know they're getting more than just a meal. They're getting an experience that was, that's actually worth repeating. right? And here's the thing. When they get an experience that's worth repeating, they're going to share that word of mouth for you. They become your biggest advocates. They're the ones that tell their friends, their families. They're the ones that go online and write reviews. They'll tell anybody who listens that your restaurant is the place to be. This is not a pipe dream. I've done this with thousands of restaurants. It's possible when you master the art of strategic pricing. It starts when you have a shift in your mindset. When you, if you've looked at that 3P framework, people, product, process. In the people part, there's a very, very critical element of that people part that most people overlook. Before culture, before hiring, is mindset your mindset. You need to see pricing as a necessary evil. Well, a lot of people see pricing as it's, it's, it's a combative thing. You want to start seeing it pricing as a powerful tool that can actually drive your business forward. It's about understanding that the right prices elevate your brand. The right prices attract loyal guests. The right prices set you apart from a very, very crowded, oversaturated market. When you price with purpose, it's not just about covering your cost. It's about reflecting the true value of what you offer. So imagine a menu that doesn't just meet expectations, but exceeds them. A menu that commands respect and drives loyalty because every dish, every price has been carefully considered with a purpose intent. A menu that doesn't apologize for its prices, but stands tall, confident in the value it delivers. This is the possibility that awaits you when you price with purpose. It's not about just getting more money. It's about creating a sustainable, thriving business that guests cannot get enough of. Again, it's not about just numbers on a page. A lot of people, when they put pricing on their menu, it's just numbers on a page. This is about the perception of your brand the value offer, the longevity of your business. You are playing a, a seriously dangerous game when you undervalue what you bring. Okay? You have to tell your story. Again, what we're going to do, right? Rethink our pricing strategy. Reclaim our menu. Reclaim the value we offer. To do that, I'm going to give you some principles. Everybody with me so far? <laughs> Everybody know price with purpose? All right. I'm all fired up. <laughs> Looks like, how much coffee did Donald have today? I had no coffee. I'm just like this naturally. All right, let's talk about the three Ps of strategic pricing. Perception is number one. Price for value, not for bargains, please. The first principle of strategic pricing is you have to understand that price is more than just a number. Write that shit down. All right. It's a signal. When guests look at your menu, they're not just seeing prices. They're interpreting value. If your price is too low, you're sending a message that what you offer is no better than the other place down the street. It's like, hey, hey, we're just here to fill your stomach. I'm not here to offer you a memorable dining experience right? That's not what you're about. I mean, everyone on this call is trying to create something extraordinary, not average. If you were average or strive for average, trust me, you would not be on this webinar. You'd be at your restaurant with your head in the sand, doing the same shit you're doing every day, getting the same results. But you're here because you know there's something different that you have to do. That's why you're on this call. Okay. I mean, most of you are about high quality ingredients. I think, I think every time I talk to a restaurant owner, they always say we buy high quality ingredients. We have really, really skilled culinary people in the kitchen that craft each dish with precision. We want to, we want to produce an unforgettable experience that lingers long after the last bite. That deserves a price tag 
that reflects his true worth. When you price for value, you're telling your guests that, uh, you know, we know what we bring to the table and it's worth every penny. That's the confidence you want to have. Remember, you're not competing on price. If you compete on price, you're a commodity. You're competing on quality, on experience, on the unique value proposition, the unique experience you deliver. This is how you elevate your brand. Price too low might bring in more guests, but it's also going to dilute your brand long-term, and it's also going to diminish the perceived value that you have in the market. Instead, you got to price your menu in a way that aligns with the quality and the experience that you provide. Let your pricing be a reflection of your confidence in what you deliver because remember, you are not in the business of being the cheapest. Leave that to the McDonald's of the world. You're in the business of being the best. Fair enough? All right, number two, positioning. You got to know your market and you got to be different or differentiate. Remember, you're not just competing with other restaurants for a spot in a crowded market. That's the red ocean. You're competing, you're competing for your guests' loyalty and attention. To stand out in a crowded market, you must know exactly who your ideal guests are and what they value most. Are they looking for an exclusive, one-of-a-kind dining experience? Do they prioritize freshness and quality of local source ingredients? Or maybe... Maybe they're connoisseurs of a specific cuisine that you've mastered like no one else. I had a call this morning with someone. They do they they have a beautiful, beautiful Thai restaurant in San Diego. I mean, and 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 she's really she's afraid of raising her prices. And I said, Do you understand the value you offer me? That I can come to your restaurant and I can just tell by your food and the quality of your food and just the reviews you have. That when I, if I close my eyes and ate in your restaurant, would I be transported back to your homeland? Would I be sitting like in your country, feeling that I can have the smells, the tastes, and the sensations of being in your country? She said, Yes, that's exactly what I strive for. I said, Then don't be afraid to raise your prices because you're offering me an experience I cannot get. You're saving me an airline ticket. <laughs> okay. That's amazing stuff. When I opened my first restaurant, that small restaurant in, in Michigan, I did Southwestern cuisine. Now, Southwestern cuisine is different than like the typical Tex-Mex out there. And my number one marketing strategy was this. I can said, the taste of Santa Fe without leaving town. I wanted you to have the experience of being in Santa Fe, New Mexico, sitting there, Smelling this fresh, you know, fresh roasted chilies being roasted on the, on the street corners, the smells of the fresh tortillas, the smells of New Mexico, just the, the beautiful scents and stuff like that, the freshness of the air, the freshness of the ingredients. When you close your eyes and took a bite of my food, I wanted you to be transported back to that time and place. That's what you want to do. Okay. Positioning is about carving out your niche in a market and then owning it. It's about differentiating yourself from the noise and making it clear why guests choose to go to you over the competition. Your pricing should reflect this positioning. If you're offering a unique experience that no one else can no one else can match, I mean your prices should make that clear. Do not be afraid to set a premium price for premium offerings. When you understand your market, when you understand what your guests truly value, you can set a price that resonates with them and reinforces that your brand has a very unique selling proposition. We call it the USP in marketing. This is how you not only you not only attract the right guest, but again, you keep them coming back for more and more and more. That's what we want. And then finally, profitability. <laughs> oh, this is where everyone kind of goes, uh, I don't know, I'm a little scared about this part. It's where you have to balance out the cost and margins with guest retention. Let's be real here. Pricing isn't just about slapping a number on a menu and hoping for the best. I always love this when I ask restaurant owners, how'd you come up with that price? Uh, that's what the place down the street charges for it. Is your food better than theirs? Yeah. And do you know if they're making money? No. Then why are you, why, why are you using that price strategy? 
I'm going to price my menu a little just like everyone else in town so I can be competitive. No. Right? <laughs> no. No. Menu strategy, pricing strategy is a delicate balance between covering your cost and securing a healthy profit margin. Hashtag write this down. Profit is not a dirty word. Every dish on your menu should be contributing to your bottom line. If it's not, it's time to either reprice it or rethink it and maybe even take it off the menu. So you always start with the basics. Calculate your food cost. Calculate your labor. Calculate your overhead. We call this break even. And then what's the desired profit margin I want to make? Then don't stop there. You need to dive deeper into the psychology of your guest. You have to understand what makes them tick and use that knowledge to your advantage. There's great pricing tactics out there like bundling. We call this the prefix menu. We call this the combos. There's also great things called upselling. Remember, premium pricing just aren't tricks. They're actually a real good strategy to maximize your revenue without alienating guests. Maybe they means like, you know, a lot of my restaurants offer what we call a pre-fee or fixed price menu during the weekdays that encourages guests to spend a little bit more for an experience. And then we pair it up with a nice wine flight, beer flight, cocktail flight to maximize our revenue. Maybe it's about highlighting high menu items with mouthwatering description, using really good graphics on my menu to draw my attention to them. The key is balance. You want to ensure that your pricing covers all your cost and leaves you with a healthy profit. You, you got to make sure that there's enough on the market and enough in the menu to keep your guests coming back for more. If you price too high, you're going to risk driving people away. If you price too low, you're going to undermine your profitability. The sweet spot is where your guests feel like they're getting a great value and that you're making the money you need to grow your business. All right. If you're driving, <laughs> if you're driving in your car, pull over, because I have to give you a warning right now. <laughs> okay. sit, uh, sit down, hold on to something tight, because this one's going to get rough. Ready? I'm going to show you the number one mistake all restaurants make in their pricing. You ready for this one? Luke, you ready? You buckled in? All right. This is going to be some serious shit here. Why pricing your menu to a 30% food cost is the stupidest thing that you can do. Let's get one thing straight. And I've, I have countless restaurants that do this. How'd you come up with your food cost? Well, I want to make a 3% food cost margin, so I price everything at 30%. No, that is outdated. It is lazy and is downright stupid. Let me ask you this. If you're pricing your menu currently at like a standard 30% food cost, how's that working out for you? Are your margins thriving? Are you at 18, 20%? Is your restaurant packed with loyal guests who can't wait to pay top dollar? Probably not. Here's the cold, hard truth. A 30% food cost rule is a one-size-fits-all approach in an industry where nothing is one-size-fits-all. It assumes that every dish, every market, Every guest is the same, which could not be further from the reality. When you blindly follow this outdated rule, you are handcuffing. You are handcuffing your potential. You are leaving tons of money on the table, and you're failing to capitalize on the unique strengths of your menu and brand. All right, so what do we do? Well, let me explain a little deeper why the 30% rule is so stupid. Let me break it down for you. Number one, it ignores, it ignores perceived value. Pricing to a strict 3% food cost completely ignores what's known as perceived value of your dishes. Your guests are not walking calculators. They are driven by emotions. They're driven by experiences and the perception of value. If you got a dish as the star of a show, something that your guests could rave about, why would you limit its price based on an arbitrary percentage? You should be charging what the market will bear, reflecting the true value of your, your what your guests perceive, not some rigid formula. Number two, it fails to account for the realities of your market. 
different markets have different price sensitivity. There's two critical things you have to understand. There's two things as far as market positioning. There's what we call market, right? There's what the market will bear. And there's also what the market will allow you to a price. I can take a hamburger, a gourmet hamburger in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I could probably price it at $14. The market won't really go any higher than that. But here's the thing. I can take that same hamburger, exact same hamburger, go up the road to Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is only 45 minutes away, put that same hamburger in Santa Fe, New Mexico, charge $18, and I will sell that thing like crazy. Same hamburger, same exact specs, same exact everything on the plate, but the market will decide if I what I can charge, right? When you start doing this thing blindly, putting everything at 30%, it doesn't take into account local competition, doesn't take into account the demographic or the unique position that your brand has in that marketplace. You need a pricing strategy that's tailored to a specific situation, not a cookie cutter approach that treats every restaurant like it's the same. Number three, it undermines your brand. When you price your menu solely on percentage, you're not thinking about the bigger picture, which is your brand. Your pricing should reflect the quality, creativity, and the experience that your brand stands for. Sticking to a rigid food cost percentage leads to prices that do not align with your brand positioning. That confuses the guest and erodes your brand's value over time. Hashtag write this down. If your guests, if your guests are confused, you lose. Number four, it does not maximize profitability. I mean, your goal isn't just to hit a food cost target. I know a lot of people think I got to hit 30% food cost, which is bullshit because we actually go by what's theoretical food cost, not just I, you know, actual food cost. <laughs> your goal is not to hit a food cost target. It's to maximize profitability. Some dishes warrant a higher price point because of their premium ingredients and the skills required to prepare them. Others might have a lower food cost because... You know, just because they could be perceived value like that. That 30% rule ignores these nuances and you leave a lot of money on the table. And then number five, it ignores guest psychology. The 30% rule fails to consider how guests actually make decisions. Hashtag write this down. People don't choose dishes based on your food cost. They choose based on their cravings, their experiences, and how well you communicate the value of what you're offering. Let me say that again, because that's a gold nugget. People don't choose your dishes based on your food cost. They choose based on cravings, experience, and how well you communicate the value of what you're offering. That goes to how are you telling your story in your marketing. When you price by a strict food cost percentage, you miss out on opportunities to upsell, you missed out on creating tiered pricing and you miss out on the ability to offer a premium experience that could actually significantly boost your revenue. So what's the alternative? A couple things. All right. Ditch the 30% food cost. Start thinking strategically about your pricing. Look at each dish, each dish individually and ask yourself these four questions. What's the true value of the dish? How does it fit into my brand? What are my guests willing to pay for it? And how can I position it to maximize profitability while still delivering an outstanding experience? Your pricing should be a reflection of the unique value you bring to the table, not an arbitrary percentage. Price with purpose. When you price with purpose, you elevate your brand, you attract the right guest, and you drive business towards greater profitability. So here is the action plan, step-by-step -step action plan, five-step action plan to help you revamp your menu pricing today. You ready? Number one, audit your menu. Get real with the numbers. So let's start by stripping away all the guesswork. You need to know exactly where you stand with each dish on your menu. This is not about eyeballing each ingredient and making rough estimates, right? It's about diving deep into the details. I always know when an owner is bullshitting me, 
when I ask, what's your food cost? And they say, um, it's, and they pause and they hesitate and they go, um, it's about 30, 34%. All right. You don't know. <laughs> All right. Stop lying. You don't know. Just be honest. You don't know what your food cost is. That's okay. That's a starting point, but don't guess. <clears throat> it's about anytime. Somebody says it's about, it's about nothing. If you don't know exactly what the percentage is of your food cost, like my food cost is 28.3, it's 24.7, it's 34.3, then you do not know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, you don't have a business, you have a hobby, a very, very expensive hobby. You need to break down the cost of every single dish. That's where that food cost bootcamp is so powerful. Every ingredient, prep time, labor, overhead, all those little garnishes, all those little sides, Leave no stone unturned. It's the hardest work you're going to do, but it's the most rewarding and profitable. It's the only way to get a clear picture of what's actually happening with your profitability. Once you have hard data, it's time to face the music. You have to compare your cost with your current pricing. Where are you bleeding money? Are the dishes that cost more to produce, are they... Are, what are they bringing in compared to what they cost, right? You have to identify the money pits, those dishes that are dragging down your margins, and it's time to make some tough decisions. When we do menu engineering, we put our menu into a stratification matrix. It tells us what the stars are, the puzzles, the plow horses, and the dogs. The dogs are not profitable, and no one likes them. Remove the dogs from your menu. Those other items like the plow horses and the puzzles, can they be repriced? Can I maybe just reposition them on the menu? Maybe I just need to just totally take them off for a while, give them a little break. Here's the thing. Don't be sentimental about your menu. The biggest problem with most people in their menu is that your ego is wrapped up into it way too much. Being a chef, I can tell you, my ego was wrapped up in my menu way too much. It was very, very tough for me to make decisions. But then my business coach, my first business coach told me to start putting my ego in the back table where it doesn't, you know, and then I set the table and I make decisions that actually feed my brand. Your ego will eat your profits. Hashtag write that down. Your ego will eat your profits every single day time right don't be sentimental don't let fear hold you back if you need to raise your prices you need to raise your prices you need to be ruthless you need to be courageous if a dish isn't pulling its weight it's got to go this menu audit is about clearing the deadwood and making room for those items that actually contribute to your bottom line number two segment your menu Create a strategic pricing tiers. So again, not all dishes are created equal and neither should their prices be. Your menu should reflect a wide range of options that cater to different guest preferences and also different price points. Start by categorizing your dishes into strategic pricing tiers. So what I do is I think about my premium offerings, dishes that showcase the very best of what we can do using top ingredients, expert techniques. And then those things carry a higher price point because they reflect a superior quality. Then I have a middle tier. These are, these are the things that are high quality, but maybe not necessarily like the pinnacle of my menu. They're reliable. They're crowd pleasers. They deliver consistent value without breaking the bank. Then finally, I look at more accessible options. Entry-level dishes that are priced to attract guests that might not be ready to splurge on the big ticket items yet, but maybe they want a little taste of what I have to offer. When you segment out your menu, you cater to a broader range of guests while maximizing profitability. Each tier serves a purpose. And when you put this tier packaging together, it creates a strategic plan that creates a balanced menu that appeals to different tastes and also different budgets. Number three, you have to test and iterate, that means implement, analyze, and adjust. So here's where, mess, here's where most restaurants stumble. They set their prices, and then they just leave them untouched, thinking that, oh, that's it. Donald, my pricing's done. That's it. So one and done, I'm out. Hashtag write this down. 
Pricing is a dynamic element of your business, not a static one. When you implement your new pricing structure, you have to keep a close eye on it, how it performs. Monitor guest reactions. Look at sales patterns. Look at profit margins with an eagle eye. Are there certain dishes flying off the shelves? Well, some things are starting to collect dust. Are guests pushing back on certain price points or are they willing to pay for quality? Use the data to make informed adjustments. The data drives your decisions. Take your ego out. Let the data drive decisions. If a dish isn't selling at the price you want, don't be afraid to make changes. You might need to tweak the price. You might need to rework the recipe to increase its perceived value. Or you might even have to reclassify it into different menu tiers. The goal is to find that sweet spot where your guests feel that they're getting a great deal and that you're making the profit that you deserve. Remember, pricing is not a set it and forget it strategy. It requires ongoing analyst, analytics, ongoing analysis, and refinement. And you should have it in your calendar where you're doing this every single quarter. That's every three months. <laughs> so you guys know, every quarter, you should be doing this, right? Number four. You got to train your staff. You have to ensure consistent execution. Your pricing strategy is only as effective as the people who execute it. This is why your team needs to be fully on board with your new pricing and they have to understand the value behind it. This isn't just about memorizing numbers. It's about knowing the stories behind each dish, the quality of the ingredients, where you source stuff, where it comes from, the skills required to prepare it. I, mean, I, I get a lot of these places like they marinate stuff for like three days and then they like slow braise stuff for 18, 24, 36 hours. You need to tell the story, right? A lot of people don't know. <laughs> and if you're not telling the story, don't assume they can just get it by osmosis that, you know, I, you know, I don't, didn't you? I, yeah, my short ribs take, a, you know, 18 hours. I slow braise them for 18 hours. Well, tell me that. Make the name 18 hour short ribs. Train your staff to communicate the value to the guest effectively. They should be able to upsell premium items with confidence. That means role-playing. <laughs> they got to make the guests feel like they're getting something special, not just something expensive. That's role-playing. Consistency is the key. Every guest interaction should reinforce the value of your pricing from the moment they're greeted to the moment they leave. If your staff's well-trained and knowledgeable, they can create a dining experience that justifies your prices and leaves the guests feeling satisfied, not shortchanged. You have to invest time in training, right? Your staff has to become ambassadors of your brand. They have to turn those, those regular guests into loyal, raving fans who appreciate the value you deliver. And then five, you got to communicate value. You have to market your menu wisely. Don't let your new pricing go unnoticed. It's not just enough to update your menu and hope for the best. You need to actively communicate the value behind your prices. Use your website, use social media, use email newsletters, use in-person interactions to tell the story. Hashtag write this down. Everything in your restaurant has a story. Every ingredient, every dish, every guest, every server, every location, Everything about your brand, you, everything has a story. Your job as a restaurant owner is to tell the story. You want marketing that stands out? Tell me a fucking story about why I should come to your restaurant. Right? You have to create a narrative that makes your guests feel proud to dine at your restaurant. Show them that they're not just paying for food. They're investing in experience that's worth every penny whether it's through behind the scenes content. Luke and I love that stuff. I mean, take me behind the scenes, right? Show me chef spotlights. Give me guest test. Give me guest testimonials. Have staff testimonials. Why they love working. What's your favorite dish in the menu? Show your audience why your dishes are priced the way they are. When you effectively communicate your value, you're going to attract the right guests, the ones who actually appreciate quality, and here's the thing, willing to pay for it. Remember that.
Final thoughts. <laughs> Whew, that was fast and furious, huh, Luke? Right. You got to take control of your menu and reap the rewards. It's time to stop letting your menu dictate profits and start controlling your pricing strategy. Remember, your menu is not just a list of dishes. It's the most powerful tool you have to shape your brand, uh, influence guest behavior, and secure the future of your business. But that power is wasted if you're not intentional on how you use it. For way too long, restaurant owners have fallen into the trap of letting outdated rules, rigid formulas dictate their pricing. They leave so much money on the table. They miss out on opportunities to truly stand out in a crowded market. But when you price with purpose, you're not just setting numbers on a page. You're making a strategic decision that defines your brand, attracts the right guest. You're saying, this is who we are and this is what we're worth. You're not afraid to demand what you deserve because you know the value of what you offer. And guess what? Your guests will know it too. They're going to see the thought and care that goes into your menu. They'll be willing to pay a premium for the experience that you provide. No longer will you be competing on price alone. You will move out of that red ocean, that commodity, and you're going to be moving into that blue ocean where you compete, where you actually compete on quality, on uniqueness, and an undeniable value that only you can deliver. But here's the thing. The benefits don't stop at just perception. By taking control of your pricing strategy, you also secure the financial health of your business. You're ensuring that every dish contributes to your bottom line, that your margins are strong, and that your business is built for long-term success. You're creating a pricing strategy, a pricing structure that not just covers your cost, it drives profitability, allows you to reinvest in your restaurant, allows you to reinvest in your staff, allows you to reinvest in your guest experience, allows you to have a lifestyle doesn't require you to be handcuffed to your restaurant. When you get this menu pricing under control, it sets a foundation for growth. It sets a foundation for expansion and sustained success. Implement these strategies today. Watch your restaurant transform from just another option to a must-visit destination. You're also going to see a, a shift in your guest attitude. They're going to be more loyal. They're going to be more engaged. They're going to be more willing to spread the word about the incredible value that you offer. You're going to notice a huge difference in your profit margins because each dish is going to pull its own weight. It's going to contribute to a healthier bottom line. And most importantly, you're going to feel the difference in your confidence as a restaurant owner because you know that you're no longer at the mercy of your restaurant, that you're in control and that you're steering your business towards the success that you've always envisioned. So it's time to take the reins. Stop letting your menu dictate your fate. Start dictating your menu's impact on your business. The rewards are here for the taking. You have to be bold enough to reach up and grab them. Now, before we leave today, let me ask you a question. If I was to drop you off in the middle of the woods, if I took Luke by helicopter, just dropped him off in the middle of the woods with a water bottle and said, if make it back to town, he probably couldn't make it. But if I gave Luke, Luke a topographical map, I showed him how to use the map, and I gave him a compass, he could navigate back. Well, for the last 14 years, my coaching programs have helped over 2,800 independent restaurants just like yours. Here's the two things that coaching gives you, right? It gives you new tools, and it gives you accountability. The Restaurant Accelerator Program is the fastest path to getting from where you are to where you want to be. It is a step-by-step -step roadmap with modules, tools, coaching, and training to get you what you want, a highly profitable restaurant. And when you get the Restaurant Accelerator, you're not just getting that program, you're also getting a lot of other value behind it. I'm going to give you every program you need, every tool you need, every download you need to be successful. This is a complete do it, <laughs> make money, branding program is going to give you all the bells and whistles that you need every module you need every tool you need every roadmap you need to be successful plus you're going to have the accountability of a certified restaurant coach to hold you to what you need to do they're going to be your guide they're the compass this right here is the map your coach is the compass because trust me you will get off track everyone does <laughs> that's why coaching is so powerful.
It's over 200 hours of, of training material that you have access to 24 seven, 380 downloads. I'm not gonna hit it too hard. If you're interested in learning more about the Restaurant Accelerator, just speak to somebody on the Restaurant Growth Team about the program. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> I'll, open the, I'll open the floor up for any questions you have. You can either type them in the chat, you throw them in the Q&A, whatever you want to do. I'm good with either way. Do we have any q and I don't see any Q&A questions. No, no Q&A. No questions? Well, you guys are a quiet crowd today. You have any questions, Luke? <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of questions. You have a lot of questions? <laughs> All right, good. I love it when people have questions. What's the best strategy for hiring good employees? The best strategy for hiring good employees is, number one, have a culture that attracts good employees. Number two, you want to have a recruiting plan. That means I'm actively recruiting. So one of the things we teach in the talent attraction method is called the perfect job post. The perfect job post will show you how to write a psychologically based kind of a job description or a job post that will actually attract more people. I've had people that went from getting like four applications a week, putting out the standard boring job post. When they use the perfect job post, they get over a hundred applications a week now. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So the biggest thing I want to say, if you want to hire good employees, have a hiring strategy in place. And that talent attraction method inside the Accelerator program will give you the step-by-step -step format, how to attract better talent, how to write better job ads, how to interview better using behavioral-based interview questions, how to onboard like a rock star, how to set up training that you need to do, and then how to retain them better. Okay. I saw there was another question. Was there a question in the Q&A? No? No, you know, let's actually uh, try something new here, guys. Uh, I started a poll. Oh, let's do a poll. So the polls. All, all the right, people polls, who are Ross. in the webinar, I got a poll here. So the poll is just asking uh, if you want one-on-one <laughs> -on -one help increasing your profit margins. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. As Donald and I always say, we are not going to hard sell you on the coaching mm -hmm. program, oh, no, no. but it is a freaking awesome program. So if you do want help, uh, I would mm -hmm. recommend go to the poll, answer the question, simple yes or no if you want help. And if you do want help, we're running a promo for August. Uh, the promo is limited to 10 restaurants. And yes, mm -hmm. it actually is limited to 10 restaurants. It's not a fake scarcity thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first month of the coaching program, you can get $500 off. So great thing that's, uh, with the coaching program, Donald can that's say it better than I can. Yeah. Um, the, the program is a guaranteed result. So yes. as long as you do the work, it You'll is a guaranteed results. results. So yes. we guarantee a minimum of 5% margin increase in 90 days. I mean, Don, you could speak to it. That's minimum. Usually get way <laughs> more people, than that. Most yeah. people, I'll get you at least, at least, I get most people like to eight to 10 is what our, what we've been yeah. seeing is we've been getting people to eight to 10 in 90 days. So yeah. Yeah. 5% was like an easy guarantee. Like, I can easily yeah. get you five. I get you usually five in like 60 days. Just remember, as so, you go higher up the profit ladder, it just, it, you know, getting from like zero to 5% is pretty easy. Five to eight is pretty easy. Eight to 10. Then when you hit 12, it starts slowing down a little bit because now we're really digging into a lot of details, a lot of different stuff. And once you hit that 15% margin, then we just basically are starting getting like one point, one point, one point, one point. But the beautiful thing about when you hit those high profit margins, you have a lot better habits. So you maintain that profitability where a lot of restaurants are like the roller coaster. This month I was 10%. Next month I'm losing money. Now I'm at 8%. I'm at 3%. I'm at 12%. I'm at, four, I'm at minus five. We want to stop the up and down roller coaster and get you where you're just kind of like steady and sustainable and that you're actually growing, 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 growing. Now, every market has fluctuations. Every economy goes up and down. So your profit margins will go up and down, but we don't want to see radical ups and downs. We want to see it kind of just flutter like it normally should, not uh, peaks and valleys. I don't like those. All right. Let's see where well, we got some, we got a couple of questions in there. Let's see. We are a franchise and our menu is set for us. However, we have some control on our pricing. What's the best way to address market feedback? Number one, I want to see, I want to do a competitive market analysis. Number two, like I have my food costing done until I see exactly what my food costs are. And then I want to put that into a matrix where I can understand what are my stars, my puzzles, my dogs, my workhorses. And then I create a marketing, a pricing strategy around that. 
right? Now we don't want to do off like what the competition is doing. Cause if you have a better value or a better brand, we want to do a little bit of premium pricing. I mean, it's like the burger market. There's a lot of burger restaurants out there. Like places like five guys compete at a higher price point than like McDonald's and in and out. And why? Because they feel they offer a better experience. Okay. Okay. Let's see. What was it? What's the best? Oh, we talked about hiring already. I use a digital menu. How do you do menu engineering? It's placing on a high profit on the top of the page. All right. Digital menu boards are a little different. Number one, you should always do a menu engineering worksheet where I pull off the pro the cost of each item. And I use my product mix report to generate what are the stratifications. When I have that stuff, then we can start talking about digital menu boards. So there's a whole psychology around it. Can't go into too much detail, but in the extreme menu makeover, we talk a lot about digital menu boards and we give you some psychology principles for digital menu boards. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff. And there's a lot of cool AI out there nowadays that actually can really, really target in your digital menu boards to really, really be specific. There's AI out there now. This is crazy shit that when like, let's say Luke and I walk into a restaurant, it will do a facial recognition on us and it will know like we're two men. It will actually identify our age and stuff like that. And it will pop up stuff and make recommendations on the digital menu board based on who we are. It's the craziest mm -hmm. thing in the world. Okay. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. What's your best advice that for is... getting guest feedback on pricing? For guest feedback on pricing, I usually do a small kind of focus group I find like some of my most loyal guests and I invite them into a little bitty circ uh, you know, a little bitty kind of a survey and stuff like that. Uh, I might give them a gift card for participating, things like that. I want to do an honest survey. I don't want to do a big one. I usually do like a focus group. It's like all retail brands do that. They'll do a focus group. Like before a big movie comes out, they'll run the movie through a focus group. And then they'll like a lot of times they'll go back and cut the ending or change the ending around because the focus group said it sucked. Okay. <laughs> That's what they do. What's the key to making staff work as a team? Culture. Culture, everything. If your team's not working, if, you're, if, you're, if your staff's not working as a team, it's all culture-driven. That means you don't have a mission, core values, and vision that drives them to want to work together. It's a toxic culture where it's everyone out for themselves. Not a digital menu board, but an individual iPad for a full-service restaurant. Same thing. If you're going to do a digital, menu, a digital board on an iPad, it's the same format. We'd look at the digital for we'd look at the digital uh, format, the iPad, and then we restructure it and build it. Right. Cool. Yeah, great questions. 